Maxwell Montes is the tallest mountain on Venus. It rises 11 kilometers above the mean radius of Venus. And the mean radius of Venus is 6051 kilometers, which is quite similar to the general radius of Earth, which is 6370 kilometers. It also has a similar surface gravity to Earth. Now, the mean radius of Venus represents zero meters. On Earth, zero meters is determined through the sea level. So in terms of datum, that is, zero meters on Earth and Venus, the tallest point on Venus is about 2.2 kilometers taller compared to the tallest point on Earth, which is Mount Everest. Still, the deepest point on Venus is about 3 kilometers, while the deepest point on Earth is about 11 kilometers, the Mariana Trench. So the difference between the tallest and the lowest point on Earth is 20 kilometers, about 6 kilometers more than the difference between the tallest and the lowest point on Venus. At the tallest mountain of Venus, Maxwell Montes, at its highest peak, Scadi Mons, the pressure is about 45 bars, so it has half the average pressure of Venus. Now the temperature on Maxwell Montes is at about 380 degrees Celsius, so it is by about 80 degrees Celsius colder compared to the average temperature of Venus. The pressure of 45 bars and the temperature of 380 degrees Celsius makes this mountain the coldest and the least pressurized place on Venus. Still, even this coldest temperature on its surface is enough to melt the metal lead on Earth. And the pressure of 45 bars is the same as about 500 meters underwater on Earth. Now, the reason that Maxwell Montes has a much lower pressure compared to the rest of the surface is because as elevation increases, there is less stacking up of air, so the less of it weighs down, which also causes the temperature to drop. Maxwell Montes is located at the Ishtar Terra region. It is one of the most prominent landmasses of Venus that rises 5 kilometers above the generally flat surface of Venus. About 80% of the surface of Venus is found within a difference of 1 kilometer in elevation. Now, another large highland landmass is Aphrodite Terra, which is also quite high up overall at about 5 kilometers above zero meters, but its highest peaks are nowhere near as tall as the ones at the Ishtar Terra region. Also, the fact that these landmasses stand out against the generally flat surface is why sometimes they are also referred to as continents. Now, Maxwell Montes, because it is on Ishtar Terra, is surrounded by a 5 kilometer high landscape. So really the highest point of Maxwell Montes rises 6 kilometers above the surrounding plains. And overall the entire mountain is about 5 kilometers above the surrounding plains. So on the right corner of this image, Maxwell Montes is clearly visible. It is abruptly propped up and is much brighter compared to the dark surroundings. But this isn't exactly how it looks like in real life to human eyes, because this image was captured with the radar instrument on the Magellan probe that arrived on Venus in 1990 and was active for four years. Radar which is capturing non-visible wavelengths had to be used to see what is on the surface of Venus, because thick clouds in the upper atmosphere of Venus block many visible wavelengths of light coming from the surface, which is why in real life, from a distance, this is how Venus looks like. So what would being on the ground near and at the top of this mountain be like? Well, currently at least, that's far too hard of a task to achieve in real life. Even the Venera landers, which had been landing on Venus between 1970 and 1984, sustained contact with the Earth for only about several minutes, up to about two hours. Still, let's say that somehow you have a spacesuit that sufficiently protects you from the extreme conditions of Venus. So on Venus in general, it is not clear as to what sort of visibility can be expected at what distance. Certainly things a couple of meters away from you would be quite visible. But it's more uncertain with things that are kilometers away. Still, since you would be on the surface of Venus, you would still be in the troposphere of Venus, where there are not many clouds. 
so it's possible that at least things hundreds of meters away from you would be visible. The true significant blocking of light actually occurs at elevations about 50 to 75 kilometers away from the surface, since that is where most clouds of a Venus are. So standing here, you would definitely be able to see under your feet a darkish, rusty, rigid, solid lava surface that has quite large particles. It would also be as dim as a cloudy day here on Earth, since above you would be a thick layer of clouds. Walking around you also wouldn't be able to see craters like you would on the Moon or Mars, since they are quite rare on Venus. Indications are that that is because at around 450 million years ago, Venus experienced a massive global volcanic event where so much lava reached the surface that it nearly entirely renewed the surface and covered all of the previous craters. Then the lava on the surface cooled down and turned into rock. That was all essentially happening while on Earth truly complex multicellular organisms were starting to form. So as you would walk towards Maxwell Montes, while approaching it from its western, sharp side, you would eventually notice a sudden slope in front of you that goes about 5 kilometers high up in the sky. It would also be noticeably quite a bit brighter. It would stand out against a much darker surface. Now what the Magellan probe generally found is that on Maxwell Montes and on other elevations beyond around a few kilometers, the surface is much brighter. It's somewhat uncertain as to why that is the case. Some ideas suggest that at higher elevations, because of the lower temperatures, metals of Venus get deposited there as they sublimate in the hotter, low elevation regions. And because they are quite reflective, they return a bright image to the radar. Moving around in the 96% carbon dioxide atmosphere of Venus would also definitely give a weird sensation as the pressure is so high. That would cause for you to feel intense wind resistance while moving about. It would sort of be like moving around in water or mud. Now if you found yourself right at some of the tallest points of Maxwell Montes, all around you you would see big steep rugged slopes. You would see the entirety of the surface around you covered in white matter that is quite possibly metal, as already mentioned. Moving around at the highest points of Maxwell Montes would also be easier compared to anywhere else on the surface of Venus, because you would be experiencing half the pressure of the general pressure of Venus. So moving around would feel less gooey compared to the general surface of Venus. But still, not much else would give it away that you are at some of the tallest points on Venus, even if the sky was perfectly clear. Even if you were right at the tallest peak of Maxwell Montes, Scotty Mons, which is sort of in the center of Maxwell Montes. And that is all simply because Maxwell Montes all around has a diameter that is about 800 kilometers long, which means that Maxwell Montes has a surface area around that of Spain. It is so massive that at its highest peak, while looking into the distance, in your view, you would still be surrounded by the same mountain range. So that is a general overview of Maxwell Montes and what visiting it would be like. Now considering how interesting it looks and how it stands out quite a bit from the rest of Venus, sending a lander on some of the highest points of Maxwell Montes seems like a good idea. We could then get photos of this alien landscape right from its surface and also study the composition of the white matter up close. Now of course the conditions there are also quite harsh, but they are literally better than anywhere else on the surface of Venus. Still, even there quite a lot of effort would be needed in order to create a lander that could handle those conditions for even just a few hours. <laughs> 